As many of you know by now, Elizabeth Warren has sworn off high dollar fundraisers with elites because she knows and she stated repeatedly that this has a very corrosive effect on politicians. It is a corrupting influence. So she has sworn off these types of high dollar fundraisers. Although swearing off these types of fundraisers comes with a really big caveat. Here's what she said during an interview with TYT. You, you mentioned earlier that uh, you don't believe in unilateral disarmament. So does this only apply in the primaries or will you carry this over to the general election or any other election you'll have going forward? So this is for primaries. Look, I do not believe in unilateral disarmament. We need to win. We need to win in 2020 and when we hit 2020, and we're in a race against Donald Trump when we're in a race for control of the Senate and control of the House and in control of the state houses and the governor's mansions. In all of those, the Republicans are gonna be bringing a lot of money, a lot of power, a lot of dark money, a lot of super PACs all to the fight. We play by the same rules and in that one, I say, we got to be all in. It's not just progressives who want to see uh, the abandonment of big donors. Um, most voters are concerned about this issue. Are you at all worried that they would stay home during the general election if you pivot toward accepting that money? Look, I think that what we've got right now is we got to show what we can build person to person to person to person across this country. I think we've got to show what we can build through democracy, that we believe in democracy, that we have faith in democracy, that we can make democracy work. I think we can show that in our primary. I think then we can just be tough as nails and take on Donald Trump, take on the Republican senators and congressmen in the general election, and then we gotta change the laws. So at the time when she initially said this, I made a video vocalizing my disappointment because it really doesn't make sense for you to do this. If you're the Democratic Party nominee, you're one of two candidates who will be elected. You are going to get free press and you don't need to raise money by being corrupted possibly by elites, by rich people. So why would you do that? Why would you allow elites to buy access to you essentially when you already are going to be able to effectively get the message out. I mean, think about this. Hillary Clinton outraised Donald Trump by a fairly large margin and she still lost. In the general election, when all the eyes are on you, you don't need big money to win. You'll need money to win, let me be clear. But you can sustain yourself with, you know, grassroots fundraising. Hell, even a lot of candidates that I talk to who are running for Congress across the country, in those races, it's a lot more difficult to get your name out there, but they're still being principled regardless and they're not taking big money. They're not doing these high dollar fundraisers because they know it is corrupting and they don't want to be corrupted. So with that being said though, Elizabeth Warren just had a very stellar third quarter uh, of fundraising. The only person who outraised her marginally was Bernie Sanders. He crushed it, but she still did really good, right? She raised a lot of money from small grassroots donors and probably realizing how she can sustain herself throughout the general if she's the nominee with just small dollar fundraising, um, she made this announcement. She decided to walk back her general election pivot. As Shane Goldmacher of the New York Times tweeted, in a shift, Elizabeth Warren now says she will not do big money fundraising events if she's the Democratic nominee. She had previously said her ban only applied to the primary. Now, I actually gave her credit for this on Twitter when I found out about this because I am of the belief that when you tell a politician to do something and they listen, you should commend them for it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I trust her. You know, I, I see the writing on the wall, right? Elizabeth Warren, we all know that she did these big dollar fundraisers back in 2018 when she was seeking re-election in the Senate and she transferred about, what was it, 10 million of her own money from those big donors to her 2020 campaign. Now, it's not unusual to transfer money from your Senate to your presidential campaign. Bernie Sanders did the same thing. But what's problematic is that she essentially said, look, I'm not going to be corrupted. I'm not taking these uh, money from fundraising events. But I mean, you kind of did because you took the money and then you're transferring it. So that's an issue. But, you know, whenever a politician does something good, I believe in both a stick and carrot approach. We beat them over the head with a stick until they acquiesce. And uh, once they do, then we offer them a carrot and 
tell them they did, did a good job. But with Elizabeth Warren, she just it's like she's going out of her way to uh, faceplant because less than 24 hours later, she walked back that commitment. Because as NBC News reporter Mark Murray pointed out, Elizabeth Warren's campaign clarifies she'll raise big dollar money for the party if she becomes the nominee, though not for her campaign. So this is pointless. Why did you even announce that then? You're still doing these fundraisers in the general then. Why even make the announcement? Like, I, I don't get it. Because think about this. Why do we not like these fundraisers in the first place? Because it essentially allows elites to buy access to politicians. So regardless if they're donating money to you or the DNC, they're still buying access to you. They're buying a seat at a table at one of these fundraisers to get access to you. So do you understand why this doesn't make a difference? It doesn't matter that you're doing these high dollar fundraisers for the DNC and not your campaign. That doesn't matter. So why would you even go out of your way to say, you know what, after all, I am not going to do these high dollar fundraisers in the general only to then flip flop less than a day later. I mean, we were already disappointed, right? But then you got our hopes up and now we're even more disappointed. I mean, her political instincts are horrible. Look, we have a chance now to get Bernie Sanders elected. If you are on the left, you have no reason to fight for anyone who is not Bernie Sanders. So if you are not 100% committed to getting Bernie Sanders elected, then I don't know how you can consider yourself a part of the left, like the true progressive left, right? Why are you wasting your time on anyone else who is not Bernie Sanders when one, he has the best chance of winning, and two, he objectively speaking, if you are progressive, has the best platform, the most robust platform. How? I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. So, um, I mean, I, I just, I don't understand Elizabeth Warren. Let's be real about her. Is she better than Trump? Yes, but that is a very low bar. Elizabeth Warren is not going to be a Bernie Sanders. She's no Bernie Sanders. If she gets elected, we know exactly what to expect. She's going to be Obama 2.0. She's going to do a couple of things that are pretty good. Um, she's going to do a lot of really questionable things. Um, she's going to continue the drone war and the U.S. empire. She's going to make questionable decisions. Like, do you honestly think she's going to give us Medicare for all? I mean, just the fact that she supports it in and of itself, that's good. But do you think she's actually going to fight for it? Do you think she's actually going to push to get money out of politics? I just, I can't trust her because she keeps flip-flopping, right? There's enough red flags to where we need to read the writing on the wall. Elizabeth Warren ain't it. It's Bernie Sanders. Fight for him while we have the chance to get a true progressive elected, someone who won't waver on any of these issues. Who There's no question if he's going to be bought off. Fight for Bernie Sanders. Get him elected because it's not over yet. We don't just have to sit back and accept defeat when there's three months until anyone casts a single vote, you know, at a caucus um, or caucus, whatever. You know what I mean? So we don't have to just sit back and accept this shitty situation where we have, you know, someone who isn't great going up against Donald Trump. She's far better than the rest of the field, but with how bad Democrats are currently, it's just not good enough. Sorry, Liz. So we need Bernie Sanders, and that means we have to fight for him. End of story. You could support The Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>